great. Yeah, we are already already live uh, live on Zoom. So uh, welcome everyone already to those who have already joined. Great. We have already uh, around 20 attendees. Thank you very much, guys, for being so punctual. Uh, my name is Georgi, and I will be today the co-host, the co-moderator of today's uh, webinar. And you already know the webinar is connected to the topic about which we very often get some questions lots of questions actually which is medicine and <clears throat> now it's a great opportunity for you to get acquainted with some some really interesting and high quality programs that are being offered in english language in this field which is not a quite an often issue that happens so yeah it's a nice option nice opportunity for you dear friends dear attendees to ask your questions directly to the representatives of the programs that might be for in the future your professors as well so i would suggest you and encourage strongly encourage you to be really active and send your questions to us in the q a section which you can see in the bottom part of the zoom interface you cannot use the chat and the uh, Q&A section, Q&A button is, is the only place where you can send your questions throughout the whole webinar. So for over a one hour, which is really nice, I think. And uh, <clears throat> regarding the chat, despite the fact that you cannot use the chat, but uh, I would also strongly suggest you to keep an eye on the chat because uh, uh, we will be sharing with you some important links regarding uh, studying in Germany and specifically regarding our programs being presented today. So uh, long story short, now I will uh, shortly make an introduction, a short presentation about my German university, and then uh, I will invite our speakers to the floor. So let me now share with you my screen just a second and yeah so as you know today's topic is studying health sciences and digital medicine in germany again very demanded topic and the topic is that is quite seldomly available this kind of program is seldomly available in english so this is uh, one of the rare cases and which is really great so again i suggest you really strongly recommend to um, make a use of it full of use of it so regarding my german university uh, really shortly we are Germany's largest database of English taught study programs. So if you go to our webpage, you will be able to find over 2,300 programs, both in bachelor and master's. And now recently we've added, we have started to edit uh, short courses and language courses. Courses You can see them also in uh, the small excerpt of our study finder on the slide. Uh, and yeah, which, which is really good, great opportunity for students to really easily narrow down the choices that they have so easily find the best fitting program for them. And talking about our mission of my German university is that to help uh, students like you, like me, for example, I also came to Germany as an international student. So to help students like us on their way towards studying in Germany. And this is exactly, I mean, Study Finder is exactly one of the ways of helping you, dear friends. So as I said, uh, this Study Finder has lots of filters which are really useful in order to, for you to find the best fitting program for you in terms of your background, in terms of your interests, et cetera, et cetera. So we have lots of filters that you can apply. And you can see that on the top left corner of, uh, of the a screenshot excerpt you can see the Study Finder. And when you click on Study Finder, you will see the full version of it. And uh, I will shortly, if not, if, yeah, it's already shared, by the way, in the chat, the link to the study finder, and you can already navigate through it uh, in your uh, computer. So another, the second way of helping you uh, on your way towards studying in Germany is through writing articles. So we have more than 70 really comprehensive articles, really detailed ones where you can find lots of useful and important information when it comes to studying in Germany. And the topics are different. They vary from living in Germany until uh, uni assist. So we have also uh, uh, articles on scholarships, on visa, et cetera, et cetera. So all really important and useful information for those who already know quite a lot about studying in Germany and who don't know anything at all, of course. Um, the third way of helping you is the one that we are operating right now, so which is called webinars. <clears throat> we have approximately 150 webinars per year, and the topics, again, in this case as well, are quite uh, different. Uh, we have scholarships webinar, uni assist webinar, visa webinar, also subject webinar, like today's one. We are talking about medicine, but we have also different webinars, again, on different subjects of which are being uh, taught in Germany, like engineering or political science or philosophy, sociology, et cetera, et cetera, biology. So 
all of the subjects, all of the topics, we have subject webinars uh, about that. So, and you can see the list of the upcoming webinars. If you go to mygermanuniversity.com, you will see the section on webinars and there you can sign, see the webinars which are already planned and sign up for the upcoming ones. Yeah, last but not least about uh, my German university is that our team, <clears throat> so uh, we are based in Hamburg in Germany, but our team is quite international. We are counseling uh, in different languages, of course, uh, ranging from English to Georgian and also includes Russian, Portuguese, Spanish, Chinese, uh, etc. Uh, so our team is quite international, despite the fact that we are based in Hamburg. Uh, we have people who are based in Brazil, people who are based in China, Spain, etc., etc., and we are based also in Germany, of course, but in, in different cities, not only in Hamburg. And yeah, <clears throat> let's move on to agenda right now before we go to our uh, special guests and their presentations. So we, our guests are today from Degendorf Institute of Technology, and we have three programs that will be presented today. So the first program in MSc uh, Digital Health will be presented by Professor Dr. Georgi Chaldegian. And uh, the two other programs uh, in, uh, on bachelor level, Health Informatics and MA Global Public Health, will be presented by Professor Dr. Thomas Spittler. We will uh, get back to them very soon. But before we do that, uh, let me tell you a little, some things really shortly about studying in Germany, some in interesting details. So there are two databases that I would like you to know about when it comes to searching programs in Germany. So if, for example, you are more interested in German taught study programs in Germany, then I would say Hochschule Kompass would be nice for you to use this database, because if you go there, you will be able to find four, 246 degree programs for uh, health sciences and digital medicine, and only 19 of them would be uh, in English. That's why uh, we say that if you are more into English taught study programs and you want to study in English in Germany, then uh, my German university and our study finder would be your stop because uh, in this case, we have 87 English taught degree programs for health sciences and digital medicine or related fields. And uh, out of them, three are bachelor and out of three bachelor, two will be English only, which means that you don't need to know any, for example, German at all. And 40, uh, 84 uh, master's programs and 70 of them will be English only. And uh, the link to Study Finder is already in the chat. For those, uh, just an, as an advice for those who are who don't know yet quite a lot uh, about um, studying in Germany in general, for example, studying medicine in general, what how does it look like? So what I would suggest you also to visit our subject pages. So we have subject page for uh, every subject, including a medicine, and there you can see how does studying medicine look like in Germany? For example, what are the rankings of the universities or yeah, that are offering these kind of programs? Or what are the, what is the range of tuition fees that you would expect if you want to study in German, uh, medicine in Germany? What are the application, admission, or language requirements, et cetera, et cetera. So this, I think, is really useful for those who don't know yet what to expect. They want to study medicine in Germany, but want to make sure that they know the basic details, the most important details when it comes to that. So I think that it will be really nice for you to check that out, check this page out. Uh, and of course, in general, you should always, and everyone wants to find the best fitting program for him or for her. But uh, my suggestion would be that you shouldn't be guided only by things like rankings, because I often hear that, yeah, students first check out what uh, what is the ranking of the university that's offering the program in this or that field. And then based solely based on rankings, they decide that whether this program is good choice or not, which is not correct, I would say, because rankings, of course, are really useful, can be useful. And uh, um, ranking, for example, those programs which are ranked really high in international rankings like TH THE, for example, or QS rankings. Uh, so that are really, they are really nice universities and really nice programs, but many of the details that are important, for example, exactly for you, for one particular person, cannot be captured by the rankings. There are some details that will not be a, will not be taken into account, details that are important just exactly for you. So that's what why I always suggest that don't be guided just by rankings or just by name by, by cities, for example. Don't don't think that Munich, just Munich or just Berlin are the places where you should study and are the places where there are universities with really high quality programs. This is not correct. 
of course, this is correct that they have really nice programs and really high quality. But what I want to say, what I'm trying to say is that in Germany, there are lots of towns, lots of cities with really nice universities, which provide really high quality programs. And so in order to not miss them out, you should always take them into account. And I will say even more that even these kind of towns in these towns, uh, which are not maybe well known to you yet, maybe they will be providing you the program which is the really the best fit for you other than the program in Berlin, let's say. So make your search much broader. This is my suggestion and you will be able to find the best fitting program for you for sure. And last but not least, just two types of universities that I want you to know about. One type is Universität type of university. And if you go to our study finder, you can control for, for example, you want to find uh, medicine uh, or digital medicine programs or health informatics programs, uh, and you will want these programs to be offer, offered by this type of university, you can control for that and you will be able to find 65 programs in this subject. Uh, and if you would like to uh, try to find uh, uh, these programs um, in universities of applied sciences offered by University of Applied Sciences, which is another type of university, then you'll be able to find 15 programs in this subject. So of course you then you will be you will ask now, Craig Georgi, you are telling us about these things, but what is really the difference between uni universitet or university and university of applied sciences? So what I want you to remember for now, and the most important for you would be, I think, is that uh, the difference in focus. So if you are more into research and theory, then I would say that universitet would be your stop. But if you are more into application and practice, then University of Applied Sciences would be more useful for you, to put it that way. And last but not least, again, uh, regarding the suggestions when for searching correctly for the program and not to miss out any good programs that might be the, the the nicest for you. So uh, when you are searching for digital health, for example, it's not or from any other programs from different fields. Also, uh, it's not necessarily that all the, that wording must be really strict. Sometimes that the program may be really related to digital health, but not called digital health. So I would again suggest you to uh, play around a little bit with words uh, and try to find try to use different words in, and maybe uh, then you will find a program which is really the best for you. So, and you will make sure that you don't miss any opportunities uh, to come and to study in Germany. Okay, dear friends, let me stop here and let me now uh, go into the main part and most inter interesting part of our webinar. So I would like to, again, once again, introduce to you Professor Dr. Georgi Chalt again. And he, uh, from, of course, Deckendorf Institute of Technology, and as I said, he will be presenting uh, the master's level program in digital health. And just to, to, make, to, to locate you better for those who don't know where to find Deckendorf Institute of Technology, we are in quite south of Germany right now, really close to Czech Republic and Austria. Let me finish with that and invite Professor Chautikian to the floor. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Georgi, for this introduction, and I'm now I uh, will go ahead and share my screen, and I trust that you can all hear me well and see me and also see my slide. Yes. Otherwise, please let me know. Okay, if everything's okay, then we shall start. So my name is again uh, Georgi Chalpikan. I'm professor. Uh, of digital health at uh, Degendorf Institute of Technology. We are based at the European campus Rotalin, which is uh, sort of an international branch of our institute offering study programs in English. And uh, I am the head of the program Masters of Digital Health. And I'm going to tell you now more about this program. But first, we will need to define what is digital health. It is the field of knowledge and practice, which is associated with any aspect of adopting digital technologies to improve health from inception to operation. This is the definition by the World Health Organization. And uh, digital health is a broad umbrella term that covers all use of modern information communication technologies in medicine and healthcare. There's a number of subdomains uh, in digital health that we define. Those are digital health records, health information systems, and health information exchange. 
telehealth, telemedicine, and virtual visits, mobile health and digital therapeutics, digital imaging, image analysis, as well as the so-called digital reality technologies or virtual augmented mixed reality and robotics in medicine, sensors, wearables, remote patient monitoring, and the so-called ambient assisted living, health data analytics and artificial intelligence, and last but certainly not least, the biomarkers, omics, and the so-called precision medicine. So as you can see, the scope of digital health is quite wide. Why digital health uh, has become such an important domain of study and uh, research and practice because of the many challenges that uh, modern healthcare services are facing, such as aging population, uh, the elderly people living with uh, one or even several chronic diseases that have to be managed by the health systems, as well as epidemics, public health emergencies, such as the pandemic of COVID-19 that we are all living through already two years, the growing healthcare expenses, the shortage of the healthcare uh, workforce, and the growing expectations of informed citizens. All of that makes digital health really one of the hotspots currently, hotspots of policy, practice, research and innovation worldwide. And it is considered by many that digital health is going to really revolutionize not only the healthcare, but also revolutionize uh, the entire society, the humankind and the biosphere. And that is why we expect and we know that there will be tens of thousands of new jobs related to digital health in the years to come. So it is an absolutely relevant and important topic to study, to work with, uh, and it is uh, becoming uh, more and more relevant and uh, very important here in Germany as well. And to illustrate that, I would like to just share with you this information that in the past uh, um, three years or so, uh, the Parliament of the Federal Republic of Germany has passed uh, 28 um, new legislations, 28 new laws with some relation to digital health, including six laws that are exclusively dedicated to digital health. And among those laws are uh, uh, such a uh, law as the, uh, the so-called KHZG, Krankenhaus Zukunftsgesetz, or the Future Hospital Law, that is going to invest more than 4.3 billion euros in digitalizing uh, hospitals in Germany, or uh, the so-called DVG, Digitale Versorgungsgesetz, that is a unique law, unique uh, uh, in Europe and elsewhere, which is uh, uh, one of the first legislative uh, acts that is going to um, provide a framework for prescribable and reimbursable um, uh, digital applications, uh, the so-called DIGAS. And we know that telemedicine has um, become um, super important, especially with the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, we can have a look at this figure, for example, the uptake of virtual visits or the so-called video as we call that here in Germany, that have grown, as you can see here, this is 1,370% since the beginning of the pandemic in 2019. There were only 168 practices in Germany that provided an opportunity for patients to connect with their doctors virtually. And in 2020, there were already more than 30,000 such doctors and practices. So all of that speaks of an absolute explosive growth in uh, digital health uh, services, applications, uh, as well as, of course, the um, uh, jobs, job positions in digital health. So some of the uh, important subdomains of digital health that I've mentioned earlier are, let's say, mobile health and uh, the so-called digital therapeutics or digital health applications. Uh, there are already more than 350,000 health apps worldwide. And we know that there are more than 200 apps being added each day. So this is a growing, uh, growing area 
Another important area is the connected health with different wearable sensors or smart clothes or ingestible, in the future also injectable sensors and nanosensors that are going to be collecting patients' data. And all that data, the enormous amount of digital data that uh, health systems will have to make sense out of and to integrate in providing better care. So eventually all of that will be done, of course, with the use of artificial technology algorithms. AI in healthcare is uh, uh, one of the important, one of the perhaps uh, very exciting or most exciting subdomains in digital health. And uh, all that and more is being taught through this study program. Study program, Master of Digital Health, it is, it is an MSc study program, Master of Science, that uh, features uh, strong uh, digital health management and research components, but at the same time is also very practice oriented. And we indeed prepare our graduates for taking over leadership positions in uh, digital health uh, in order to support and to drive digital transformation of healthcare, both in Germany and uh, worldwide in other countries. The study program runs for three semesters for one and a half years uh, to a total of 90 uh, European credit points. The enrollment uh, is uh, done uh, once per year. We begin in October. Uh, the study is very strongly features very strong interdisciplinarity. Uh, it is at the, um, at the interface between healthcare and technology. And our study program is also very international. We already have students coming from more than 19 nations on our campus and more than 100 nations uh, at the Degendorf Institute of Technology. The program features a balanced mix of lectures and seminars that can be conducted in hybrid or online uh, scenarios, as of course during the lockdowns in the past uh, a few uh, semesters during the pandemic, uh, as well as uh, uh, case studies, lab training, and project-based training. And we also offer a number of complementary activities, such as participation in conferences, and meetings, or field visits to healthcare facilities and digital health companies that uh, have been an uh, important part of this program or had been before the pandemic um, began. And of course, we will be resuming such activities um, as soon as the pandemic subsides. Um, perhaps most importantly, through our connections and uh, networking with international academics and with our colleagues around the world, we provide our students and our graduates with uh, exposure to uh, a global digital health community because we um, invite uh, internationally renowned academics as guest lectures. We conduct regularly seminars and workshops, not only by us, the local faculty, the local teaching staff, but also by many recognized experts from around the world. And of course, we have state-of-the-art facilities, the DigiHealth Lab, uh, with uh, quite a lot of devices and software that our students can use, not only for teaching and training, uh, learning digital health, but also for research and development, and certainly very professional and super friendly staff. Um, the entry requirements for this program are a bachelor degree in any, either any health science discipline, discipline such as medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, public health, or healthcare administration, or any computer science, information science, data science disciplines, such as software development, business informatics, or others. And of course, the requirement is an excellent knowledge of English. So the students first go through the foundations course that provides either fundamentals of medicine to students coming from tech uh, background, from tech bachelors, or fundamentals of computer science to students coming from medical, biomedical, and health background. And then the students learn the following uh, modules in relation to healthcare, you know, such as international and global health, 
um, health uh, uh, legislation, law and ethics in digital health or health economy and management. They learn fundamentals, technology, applications, and information systems in digital health, as well as data security and data protection. Uh, they, uh, they learn, of course, the uh, current approaches to health research, including biomedical statistics, and uh, very important are also uh, the uh, additional skills, uh, but important skills such as intercultural, intercultural and uh, interdisciplinary and scientific communication and management. Now, important is uh, that in the uh, second semester, in the summer semester, uh, the students also select two of out of four possible specializations in digital health. They can be specialized as either digital health uh, program, uh, project, or product managers. So go in through the digital health management track or they can specialize as digital health data scientists, including artificial intelligence or digital health software engineers. And the program the, uh, ends, of course, with a master's thesis that can be done either at our school or frequently also with our collaborating institutions, including the different digital health companies. The career prospects, as we already hopefully understood in digital health, are many and are indeed brilliant. It's, it's a super, as I always say, future-proof future -proof, uh, specialty because, um, as we already figured out, there will be many, many uh, opportunities uh, for, uh, to work, to conduct research and development. Uh, we are, right now, we are, I often say, in infancy of digital health. So there are many, many more things to come in the years and decades ahead. Our graduates, they work in, uh, in various, uh, various institutions and organizations, starting from um, hospital IT units in different digital health uh, businesses, such as uh, medical software development or in health data analytics or health data security. And uh, some of them um, uh, go through project management or product development paths in different digital health groups, organizations and institutions, or find themselves in research and development, including academia. And as, we, as I've already mentioned, we always stress that our graduates are indeed expected to drive innovation and leadership in digital health. This is our teaching staff. We have uh, tenured professors, uh, such as uh, Professor Berle, Professor Gehr, Professor cummings or Professor Spittler, who is going to talk to you later on, uh, as well as uh, teachers, uh, contracted uh, uh, lecturers, and uh, uh, research associates. So it's a, it's a, a, a quite diverse and uh, very professional team. Uh, we are also uh, collaborating with our international partners, international um, uh, colleagues, including Professor Kalra, who is one of the leading um, specialists in uh, digital health and medical and health informatics uh, from UK, from Imperial uh, University College London. And there are also colleagues from Croatia, from United States, from Greece, from Brazil, basically from almost all over the world. Uh, as well, I mentioned earlier that we provide perfect opportunities for our students to engage with international community. You can see the very impressive uh, list of our global partners, uh, as well as our academia partners. So most notably, the European campus and the Degendorf Institute of Technology is an institutional partner, institutional cooperation partner, and an institutional member to such global leading organizations related to digital health as, for example, HIMS, uh, Healthcare Information Management Systems Society. That's a, it's a global society with uh, more than several hundred thousand members, all of them in health information management and in digital health, or the International Society for Telemedicine and Health, International Medical Informatics Association, European Federation for Medical Informatics, uh, as well as Bavarian and uh, German partners. 
So this is again to illustrate that uh, being a student at Eigendorf Institute of Technology indeed puts you in the center in the in the uh, in the uh, in, in the global digital health uh, community and provides um, unparalleled opportunities for networking for learning and uh, communicating with other academics uh, this is a glimpse of our dg health uh, lab with students uh, conducting uh, research and training on digital health applications uh, a visit to uh, for example a large tertiary care hospital such as um, university medical center in regensburg attending the congress this is our team of students for example attending before pandemic of course uh, and we're going to attend it this year as well the the dmia dmea which is the largest digital health congress and uh, exposition uh, in europe taking place annually in berlin uh, this is one of our um, virtual lectures by uh, a us-based um, colleague so really uh, many uh, opportunities for networking for research and for learning that was all basically about our study program and uh, thank you for following it and uh, i'm open also for questions and of course you know that uh, it can be uh, there is a lot of opportunities for asking questions also through chat thank you very much georgi back to you thank you very much professor chaltikian um yeah as I don't know whether you uh, saw it during making the presentation that this Q&A was always <laughs> getting red, red and red. So which means that we were getting lots of questions, which means that uh, this program is very interesting for our attendees. And we got really lots of questions. I noted down some really interesting ones, but I will not ask them right now. I will prefer to, uh, to do it towards the end of our webinar, as we usually do. But for now, thank you very much. I really enjoyed. I'm sure the attendees also enjoyed this uh, really uh, insightful presentation. And we'll get back to the questions exactly for the digital health uh, towards the end of our, uh, our webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now I will, um, let's move to uh, other two programs. Uh, already Professor Chaltikian mentioned, uh, and I also introduced several times, but once again, uh, we are moving now to Professor Dr. Thomas Spittler. We are again in Degendorf, and, but now we will, uh, Professor will talk about two programs. So one, again, I'm repeating uh, because we already got some questions whether there are B, B, uh, bachelor level programs or uh, master, another master level program. So we, uh, these programs are a bachelor in health informatics and master's program in global public health, which will be right now presented by uh, Professor Dr. Thomas Spittler. I'm stopping my presentation and inviting Professor Spittler to take the floor. So thank you very much for the introduction. I want to share my screen just a second. So hope you can see it. So um, my name is uh, Thomas Spittler. And I'm the vice dean of our faculty, European Campus Hotel Inn, and I'm the study course coordinator of the bachelor program, Health Informatics on the one hand, and for the joint master, Global Public Health on the other side. So first of all, um, I want to give you some introduction of our faculty. So, um, you see we are here in germany this is europe by the way at the right hand side and we are in germany and what you see in the white one this is bavaria where we are located and we are located at the perhaps i can do it like this laser pointer we are located here somewhere to the uh, to the border to austria near to the border of austria and the czech republic and not really far away from munich yeah, we are a very interested university as we have a very high international students uh, uh, population. So we have 8,000 students and almost 30% of these students are international students from more than 100 different nations. And we are also have very 
uh, much partner universities, so approximately 200 partner universities in almost 60 countries around the globe, around the globe and around the world. And so we have a big exchange also with other universities. And this exchange is not only in research projects, it's also especially in um, teaching. And I will give you one or two examples here. Yeah, this is just a short impression of our campus. Um, this is our building here. Uh, we have a very new building, which is on the right hand side with uh, great laboratories, as Professor Chatikian already mentioned, um, that we have here well equipped laboratories, not only for the health and the digital health, but also for engineering, because in um, Bachelor of Health Informatics, you will want to combine engineering a little bit and informatics, of course, with the health domain uh, and also in uh, chemistry, for example, or in um, what was the uh, sustainability, uh, which is a very important part for us, especially when we think about global public health. Yeah, this is just an impression of the city, Pfarrkirchen. So, um, <laughs> It's a nice city, um, yeah, not so far away from Passau, which is a city with 50,000 inhabitants. And uh, next to Munich, I think Munich, um, many people know. Um, so it's, a one, it's the biggest city here in Bavaria. So, but first I want to introduce the health informatics, which is a Bachelor of Science. The Bachelor itself, has a duration of seven semester, which means 3.5 years. And the course language is 100% English. So everything is taught in English. But what would be very important for us is that you also learn German language. So it's also part of your curriculum to learn German language, with then, which then helps you um, to find better jobs here in the region and jobs here in Germany. So it will help you to learn language. And from my experience, language is the most important thing to, to be part of a country. So it's really a big challenge, a, a big chance for you to do that. In the first and second semester, um, we also want to do some online teaching. So in during the pandemic, we have uh, done many experiences in the online parts and in virtual teaching and we also want to do this um, to give you the opportunity to have the first and the second semester in a kind of online teaching so if you have problems with your visa for example um, because we realize that sometimes for students it will be hard to to get the visa especially now um, of the pandemic and sometimes you have a short delay and so that you have the chance to start uh, at, from the beginning, you want to offer it in, in virtual, but also in uh, presence. Um, you also have the possibility not going only straight forward through the curriculum, but you can also customize a little bit your study, pro your study program, because you have then some selected electives. Um, where you can choose, for example, one would be evidence-based medicine, which is uh, taught by Professor Chetikian, for example, or health data analytics, uh, which is taught by another colleague from me, and also telemedicine, for example. So you have different electives where you can choose. What is very important here in Germany is that you have that we have a bachelor program where you have a so-called compulsory internship semester. It's the fifth semester in our case. So which you're, it's part of your program that you work in industry. So it's very good for you because then you can have a check if what you have learned until now is good enough for working in industry. And on the other hand, it shows you um, if the study program you have chosen is the correct one or the right one for you. So it's really a big benefit here to have such kind of compulsory internship. And the second and the last one is, of course, you can have then good uh, yeah, corporations with some companies uh, where you can make your, where you can write your bachelor thesis 
or of course after your bachelor and you can start working as an employee and of course when you have finished your health informatics bachelor program then some consecutive qualifications could be the master digital health which was presented by professor chitikian or the joint master global public health i will present later so what job opportunities do you have yeah and with that program you can work in medical technology and medical software manufacturers you can uh, work in healthcare service branches like logistics, software development, consulting, also in the pharmaceutical industry, as you can see on the picture, but also in hospitals and rehabilitation facilities, health portals, health insurance companies, consulting firms, providers of IT services, providers of health applications, manufacturers of fitness gadgets, in association with authorities and many, many others. You see, with that study program, you have a big opportunity to work in industry later. Yeah, what will be taught in this program? So on the one hand, it will be taught uh, the, the data analytics and um, artificial, artificial intelligence. So how to work and how to go on or how to work with the, all the data we have. And what does it mean when we use artificial, artificial intelligence? Is it only a technological question or do we also have ethical questions and uh, legal questions here? On the other hand, you will also learn how to program, for example, an, an application, a web application, a website, how to design it, how to make a user experience website how to make how to combine or how to introduce um, your user group into your development of applications of software the next one is of course we have also talked about some legal stuff and ethical stuff uh, is it everything is is it fine can we do everything or do we have to think about some things here and last but not least these uh, this together always in the domain of the health so and not only in a medical background health could be also mean in prevention when we think about uh, sustainability for example uh, sustainable health care and we can also talk about buildings for example how can we deal with the buildings but on the other hand we can think about how to go on with prevention uh, which is a very very important thing here and how can we develop tools and software and hardware and services in order to help um, the people and i always tell my students we are now on the bridge from care to prevention and of course and this is only a short example and i'm a little bit proud of it of course um is we are also caring about the future and here we got funding of uh, 3.64 million euros uh for so-called flagship project met for pan um which is a project um how to improve the health care in a rural area like uh, our region here where we have our campus and you as a student and uh, should be part of this research project so on the one hand side, for example, um, that we have it in courses as a part of the course or in bachelor thesis or to work in this project. Yeah? You can also earn some money here um, when you work with us on that research project. And finally, I want to give you a short yeah, impression of what we can do. This is the rural area around Verkirchen. And yeah, let's see what we can do. And you see, we are also dealing with virtual reality. And by the way, also with augmented reality. What we have done is 
we fly with a drone into our eyes. We have the virtual reality there, and then we come out through a virtual reality glasses. This is, for example, what we are doing here and what we want to teach you in Verkehrfen. So what do you have to do when you want to be part of our program? Then yeah, you need a general university entrance qualification, so which means at least 12 years of schooling. You need a certified English language skill, skill of level B2. We have here some um, tests defined which uh, we accept. And yeah, you should do a past online assessment test, which is a very easy one. So don't fear about that. The application process would be from in the time of the 15th of April until the 15th of July. And you can apply at www.th-dhc.de, en, and apply. And the starting date of our bachelor program would be the 1st of October. Yeah, to summarize, what does health informatics bachelor programs mean? Uh, means we have excellent quality here. We offer you an excellent quality, a modern teaching methods. We do not only have uh, teaching and telling you something we want to, we want that you are part of the teaching. So we, we tell you or teach you some different kinds of methods. Um, for example, the design thinking method we will to do and show you how to include you in the teaching and also some other parts as the, your user group into the teaching. We have state of the art laboratories and we do, are doing pioneering research. So thank you very much for the Bachelor of Health Informatics. And uh, Georgi, as I understand, I can go on with the uh, um, global public health, isn't it? Yes, yes, correct. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So the second uh, thing what I want to uh, show you here is our joint master of arts, which is called global public health. And this is a joint master degree. Um, we want to do together with a Finnish university. So what does it mean joint? Joint means in this case that it's not only us who is providing the master, it's together with another university. In our case, it's a Finnish university. We want to do it together or we are doing together with them. And you, you have teachings from the University of Savonia, which is from Finland, but also from our side. So you can imagine that at the end, you have teaching from both universities and you will get a degree at the end from both universities. So not singular degrees, but one degree where you have where you have the logos and all the things you need here from both universities. Also, the course language is here in English, but of course, you can also participate on German language lessons um, if you want. The period of application is here from 15th April to 15th of June. So please be careful. This is about uh, this is because we are, have here a joint master. So we have an earlier end of our application period. Um, the start of this uh, study program will be also October, and we have no admission restrictions. And um, all modules can be attended together via virtual lectures. So we have here virtual lectures, but on the other hand, so, uh, we have also have summer and winter schools. The winter school will take place here in Germany, and the summer school will take place in Finland. Um, and here, uh, an attendance yeah, would be um, great, I would say it like that. Just to have an overview, what it, or a, to, to have an introduction of feeling what we want to taught uh, teach here in our master program so we have the global public health course we have a part of digital health and of sustainable health economy which is in the first semester and then we have three electives and here in this part you can choose from uh, six to ten elective it depends a, a little bit on the semester um, you can choose and pick one which you're interested in 
for example, gender equality, for example, what was it, knowledge-based systems, for example, um, I don't remember exactly. So you have, you can, you have uh, five to 10 electives, and then you can choose what, uh, one, uh, three different electives you're interested in. And the second part, we have the global public law and ethics. We have a very interesting thing of epidemiology and health data analytics, which is very interesting according to the pandemic and um, epidemics. Um, so, which is very, very interesting here also for physicians. And then the last one would be the universal health coverage. Sorry for this uh, typing type error here. And again, then you have five to 10 electives where you can choose um, three electives from them. And then in the last semester, we have research methods and writing skills that we prepare you again for the master thesis. And then, of course, you will have the master thesis. Yeah, what to do um, after your study program? Yeah, you can start working in the health planning and health management, health promotion, prevention human resource management, in administration, in marketing and controlling, you can work in health management in companies or in international organizations like UNDP, UNFPA, WHO, and many, many more. So you have a great possibility and this study program is yeah, very helpful and useful, especially for students with a medical background. Also, how it would be the path here to become a student for the Global Public Health at the European Campus Rotor Inn. So first of all, you need a bachelor degree with 210 ACTS, but we can also do some uh, yeah, acceptances according to 180 ACTS. Then you need a minimum of two years relevant work experience. So part-time could be also credited. Um, you have to apply until 15th of June, then uh, we have a short 30 minutes written test, it's only don't fear about the test, the written test is just to know um, if you can write and a general understanding. Um, after the test, you will be uh, invited um, for an interview, if you pass the test, of course. And then in the interview, we are asking you some questions. And here you have the possibility and the chance to convince us that you become a uh, student here at our European Campus Rotter in faculty. And then we welcome you here in our joint master program. Yeah, why to come, why to come to us? The European campus is internationally known due to the English degree programs already offered. Um, we have a broad experience in virtual teaching, collaborative classes, for example, with Spain, with Finland, with Germany, or virtual guest lectures from Norway, from Ireland, from Spain, from Finland, um, and also from the Arabic world or from the African world. And you can we have a usage of specific equipment, for example, virtual reality, augmented reality, or mixed reality. We offer an excellent equipment here, for example, in the or especially in the digital health and smart tourism lab. And finally, the European campus is a multicultural and diverse family. So I hope, and I think also Professor Chartikian, my colleague, we hope that you will join us and you will apply for one of these three um, study programs. So thank you very much for your attention and I hope we will see us in October. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Dr. Spittler for again an, another amazing presentations and, and lots of questions. I mean, I'm really looking forward now to the Q&A session because I've collected really useful, I mean, interesting questions for me as well. So. I will suggest already to jump into that uh, and start already to kick off the Q&A session. So uh, I have the whole list prepared, but I will of course not ask all the questions, but still, let me ask. <coughs> Jorge, with... in, in, yes. in, the mean, in the meantime, I, I, I've been trying to answer some of the questions in Q&A uh, while Professor Spittler was talking. You answered so, already. Please, yeah. Some some of the questions I did my best to, to answer Wonderful. in the Q and A. 
nonetheless, if you if you see any relevant questions that you think uh, should show or mm -hmm. could also be answered live, no worries. Yeah. We're Great. Here for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so um, I uh, let me start with particular uh, cool questions for the digital health. I think uh, let me tell me if you answered it already already, but still I think it's interesting to address this because um, I saw I saw that one person I think was a bit lost in terms of the thesis issue because this person says that uh, that there's no thesis so how we are supposed to get hands-on training if there's no thesis this person asks but as I saw there is a thesis so maybe there's was some misunderstanding just to clarify on that a little bit um, regarding thesis whether the thesis can be written for example in collaboration with other institutes for example in their home country or stuff like that so a little bit on thesis when it comes to digital health please Yes, uh, thanks for that question, Georgi. Of course, th this is, is part of uh, this uh, degree course or degree program. Uh, and uh, uh, actually the third semester of the program out of three semesters, the third semester is essentially largely dedicated to uh, working on the thesis, uh, uh, in addition to uh, intercultural and uh, scientific communication and management. The thesis can be conducted by students uh, solo working on on their uh, their own research topic under the supervision of professors at uh, the IT European campus, as well as um, the the thesis can also be done in collaboration with an external institution. So we have roughly, I would say, forty to sixty percent distribution. Forty percent of the students do their um, conduct their thesis uh, without any outside institution on their own. And for that, of course, we have uh, we we consult them, we supervise them um, closely, we support their thesis work, and they, as we mentioned already, they have a brilliant opportunity to work on uh, excellent research uh, uh, themes at our DG Health Lab, where we have um, excellent opportunities for that. And uh, roughly uh, sixty percent, the remaining sixty percent, is done uh, in collaboration with our um, partners, and the partners can be. Uh, located in Bavaria or even elsewhere in Germany. Uh, it can be even international partners. And we have had also an excellent, excellent uh, uh, thesis uh, works, uh, thesis research uh, that students uh, did uh, jointly with other institutions. So this is this is uh, perfectly, perfectly possible. Great, thank you but very of course, much. Of course, thesis is a necessary part yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to to have uh, have to obtain the degree yes actually 24 uh credit points out, out of 90 are uh, come from the um, msc and the students of course must have cleared uh, a given number of credits given number of courses in order to proceed with uh, their master's thesis yes. thank you very much and just as a follow-up question which has just popped up uh, again about digital health. So the person asks that, um, so minimum required ECTS is 210, but he says, or she says, it's anonymous, that bachelor's degree in my country is for three years, which leaves me with 180 ECTS. What should I do to be eligible? This person asks, just as a follow-up. It is possible. We have had um, <clears throat> applicants with less than 210, let's say with 180 CTS obtained through their previous bachelor, and it is perfectly doable. We have in, in, enrolled such students if they qualified um, according to, to, to other requirements, of course. Uh, we enroll such students, and then we give them basically one year, two semesters time to compensate, to acquire additionally 30 ECTS uh, or whatever the, the uh, sum is. Uh, to the best of my memory, we have never had any bachelor with less than 100, uh, 180 ECTS. That, that usually is not possible. Uh, but uh, 180 ECTS, we have had quite, uh, quite uh, I would say, quite a number of um, applicants, and they all um, uh, have uh, completed those additional uh, or missing 30 ECTS during their studies and then they uh, qualify for graduating from our 90 cts uh, program so this is perfectly doable great thank you very much professor chaltikian and now um, quite a interesting also question um quite particularistic one i would say for professor dr spittler 
So this person asks that um, uh, he's interested or she's interested again, it's anonymous. Uh, I'm, in, I'm interested in studying global public health master's program. Is there any possibilities to attend as a guest student, which helps us refugees to prepare ourselves again for academic life? Mm -hmm. Yes. So usually we do not have, of course, you can always be a guest student, uh, but then you cannot write the examination. What you usually do and what I recommend in this case is that you visit our uh, English courses we will provide on the so-called open BHP platform. Um, I, I, um, I add this, the, the link, uh, the uh, HTTP link uh, into this question. And um, here you can find some virtual courses from us we provide for you, for example, which is about yeah, 15 hours. And so you, it's for you a first step to coming in this academic life again. So this is my big recommendation. Use that, for example, for a half year. The only thing what you have to do here is just registration, and then you can use it. And then I hope you can apply for one of our programs. Great. Thank you very much, Professor. And uh, and also follow up question to you. Uh, one more. So again, regarding the uh, global public health. How, mu how much is the intake size, so the batch size of number of students per batch, uh, the person asks, if you, do you have any um, information about that? For the global public health, it would be approximately, um, so 50 students, uh, 30 to 50 students, it depends a little bit, um, and it depends a little bit on our partners, how much they have, so it could be also in some years, 60 students, in another year, it's only 40 students. It depends a little bit. Also on our partner. Okay, great. Thank you very much. And now I would ask one again, one question for digital health that we had, and then uh, two questions which are more or less for all programs being presented today. So regarding digital health, the person asks about uh, what, what are the computer languages that are needed in order to qualify for the digital health program? Yeah, I guess I already answered that question in oh, the chat. Okay. Actually, we can enroll and we do enroll people, um, students, uh, with no previous knowledge of computer science or information science or IT. And that is the beauty of this study program because it is uh, truly interdisciplinary. We um, enroll students, uh, students apply uh from biomedical domain as well as from computer science domain now if a medical student or, or a medical medical doctor or a person with no prior knowledge even no prior uh, developer experience um, or uh, programmer experience uh, comes to this uh, study program uh, they are um, uh, nonetheless uh, given uh, the uh, knowledge skills and uh, competencies which are necessary to conduct or to uh, take jobs in digital field domain. So there is no such strict requirement for a person coming even without any prior knowledge and experience in IT or computer science. Thank you very much. I think it was also useful for all attendees that are thinking of applying for digital health. So thank you very much for that. Now, uh, also one question for all three programs for both professors, uh, because I saw this question at least twice, and I think it's quite interesting to know about. So the person were asking about internship during the studies for all these programs, whether it's possible to do internship or whether also it's somehow there's a help and support to find inter relevant internship during the studies, or that's not the case. So may I start, Georgi, for the bachelor program? Okay. So I, I saw you were asking to me. <laughs> you said Georgi, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so for the bachelor program, it's mandatory, mandatory to do such uh, internship. And of course, we have a colleague who will help you in finding such internship. So it's not only necessary that you can do uh, that you are doing it in Germany, but we, we recommend it. But it would be also possible that you do it abroad. We also have some students who said, uh, OK, I want to do it in Belgium, yeah, which is also fine for us, um, as long as the work and the company is OK. 
But if you have no uh, specific uh, information about the company, then it would be difficult. So in this case, we, uh, we highly recommend you to ask us before you start your internship for the global public health uh, for the master itself. Of course, you can do also an internship, but it's not a part of the study program. So you're always welcome to do it, but please take into account that uh, usually you have a, at maximum five semesters uh, to finish your students, uh, your study program. Georgi? Yes, um, well, like Professor Spittler already partly covered uh, my answer as well for, for master's, master's programs at uh, uh, Universities of Applied Science in uh, Germany. Uh, typically, there is no formal internship included as a part of the curriculum. Um, I would uh, definitely support uh, the, same, uh, the same notion that it is perfectly possible to conduct uh, an internship which is, which is not uh, part of the formal cu curriculum, again, right? Like Professor Spittler said, in the bachelor program, uh, there is a requirement. It's a must to conduct a one semester of internship. In master's, we do not have that. However, it is perfectly doable, perfectly possible to conduct an informal internship at the same time while working, for example, on a master's thesis. In addition to that, I want to add another information that we, we uh, our Masters of Digital Health, MDH and DIT, uh, also has a cooperation agreement with similar program, at least one currently similar program at another university, at a university in Armenia, in Eastern Europe, uh, which is also a Masters of Digital Health, uh, which is, so this is a little bit different to joint degree, joint diploma program that Professor Spittler described uh, uh, with our global public health. This is called double degree, double diploma uh, program. So we have, for example, a double degree um, uh, agreement with, uh, um, like I said, uh, at least one already university in Eastern Europe, where MDH is 120 CTS. And that uh, university includes uh, 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 an internship semester. So theoretically, it is absolutely possible and feasible and doable for a student in MDH uh, of DIT to take that internship semester at the um, cooperating university and to get uh, uh, that uh, through that to um, uh, do the internship and to get an additional um, uh, diploma, a second diploma from the participating partner university. This is also doable. That's another possibility. Yeah, amazing. Great. This is really wonderful uh, and really lots of opportunities that I see for students. And yeah, I would suggest them to go for that for sure. Uh, and um, and I'm yeah I'm I'm sure that after this webinar you will have lots of um, guys uh, sending out applications th those who are attending because I have to talk with Nino about that but I think we have a record number of questions asked asked during the subject webinar which is really great um, Professor Professor Chatikian, uh, just as a follow up uh, regarding this 180 ECTS issue. This person once again asks that, uh, do I need to make up for this 30 ECTS if I have a master's already? Um, wait a second. If a person has another master's, so what is the total and the total cumulative amount of ECTS uh, matters? What I see. I'm assuming that, that, I'm assuming that if a person has had a master's, <laughs> then it. It uh, sort of implies that the total number of ECTS that that, that um, applicant uh, has already accumulated mm -hmm. um, would I guess probably so. <laughs> somehow be, <laughs> yeah. be uh, well above 180 or even probably above 210 um, uh, yeah. credit points. That that is the, to the best of my understanding. Nonetheless, to kind of to answer this question, um, I would say, to, long story short, I would I would uh, make the following statement. Apps, everything is absolutely possible. That's it. Great. <laughs> yeah, Unless, I think of that course just the interpretation <laughs> would be from my side. Would maybe this question, this person wanted to ask, maybe if I have a master's already, can I apply with a master or with my bachelor? Uh, so this is just my interpretation because. Uh, <laughs> No, if the, the of course, if a student is applying and the student has already had another master's, 
then that should be um, evident from the uh, documentation. Of course. Yeah, yeah. And that is and that is a different situation. Yeah. yeah. And when we do have a lot of applicants uh, coming uh, to MDH after uh, having had uh, having done already another uh, another master's degree, which is perfectly yeah. possible. Yeah. True. <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> so. Um... Now question, uh, as we have a little more time left, uh, just question for uh, most professors. Uh, the person asks, uh, does it matter when we apply? If it's within the announced timing or is it better to finish our application sooner to get a better entrance chance? So if I apply sooner, do, do my chances improve of getting accepted? This is the question to put it differently for uh, all three programs. Thomas, would you like to begin? <laughs> okay, I can start. So uh, from our side, no. So um, of course it would be great if you start sooner um, because then you have uh, a better feeling also, okay, is it enough what I am doing? Or perhaps we can give you some more helps. And if you need some specific documents from your side, it's always better to apply earlier. But of course, um, you have the application period, and within that period, when you apply, you have the same chance as the one who applies at the first day and the one who applies at the last day. Almost nothing to add. I definitely <laughs> agree. Of course, it does not uh, influence the, the our admission decision when the student applied. However, we definitely recommend uh, applying as soon as possible. And also keep in mind that if you, those who applied earlier, they, they typically get admission decision earlier. And uh, when they get admission decision might make all the difference with regard to, for example, a visa application, processing a visa to enter Germany. So that is uh, certainly, it certainly cannot be overemphasized that we do recommend uh, you guys uh, apply as soon as you feel you uh, uh, you are comfortable, you have all the documents ready, and you you, you think you're good to apply. Don't, definitely don't uh, uh, wait until the very last days. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, actually, this is of utmost importance for many international students regarding, I'm talking about visa issue. So yeah, if it's for opportunity to get your answer um, quicker, so I would suggest also from my side, just from experience of international student to apply then as soon as possible as you can, so that if you get us work quickly, you can all deal with all bureaucratic issues uh, uh, quicker because yeah, this, that's quite a lot of bureaucracy when it comes to Germany. And you will experience that when you come here, but it's totally fine. Uh, and last but not least, um, to your best knowledge, uh, I'm asking both professors, uh, is there any community of your program graduates for us to reach out and ask questions this person asks? Um, there, they yes, I can just probably um, you know, remind our or tell our um, uh, audience that there is a, a very wide, very large community of graduates of the Degendorf Institute of Technology. So the best way probably to uh, to to join them um, or to to um, uh, communicate with them or to network with them would be, and perhaps our uh, staff, uh, our colleagues from staff, uh, would be happy to share with you uh, links or additional contact uh, uh, details, contact information about uh, graduates of the Degenhoff Institute of Technology as such. Now, in addition to that, I would like to say that there is, there are uh, platforms where the graduates of uh, Degendorf Institute of Technology, specifically in digital health, uh, communicate. Uh, and uh, I would ask uh, probably after, uh, or I, I would I would uh, probably add uh, one or two uh, links uh, in the chat now. Tom, if you would like to add anything. No, I, I think you already mentioned it. And the best way is, of course, uh, to, to talk to our um, yeah, uh, international office, isn't it? International office. So where all the students can uh, ask and they will help you here also in this kind. 
Thank you very much, uh, professors, for wonderful uh, answers to these interesting questions and for, of course, really interesting uh, presentations. Uh, and thanks also to all the moderators uh, that participated, that were really active in the Q&A and the chat. That was really uh, super effective, I would say. Uh, let me wrap it up. So thanks also, of course, for all our attendees who uh, remained with us until the end. and as they were super they are super interested uh, in all the programs and yeah thanks for watching thanks for your questions thanks for being active for over an hour which is really great uh, of course if you have any questions regarding the program you can always um, uh, contact the uh, representatives directly but if you have any questions generally about studying in germany if you have not decided yet you can also always text us at info at mygermanuniversity.com, which you can see in the chat or on our Facebook or Instagram, whichever is more um, convenient for you. And yeah, if you like the webinar, if you enjoyed the webinar, it would be also nice to hear feedback from you and the direct links to Facebook or Google and Google pages are in the chat where you can leave us your feedbacks. So yeah, once again, thanks for everyone. I really enjoyed the webinar. It was really super effective, super fruitful, and I hope to see you again in the future. Thank you, everyone, and have a nice evening. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.